All right, hi there, and welcome to the first uh, real episode here on the uh, Toon Shader tutorial series, uh, which is getting an update uh, since we reached the 500 sub celebration. Be sure to uh, uh, watch the um, outline video for this series. Um, this is uh, the episode where we implement the FBX SDK, uh, which will be our only dependency so far. I think that um, this gives us some more utility in terms of actually loading FBX models and uh, uh, making our um, renderer behave more interestingly. So we will do that, but first we need to uh, actually uh, create a project. I'll start out by uh, clicking continue without code and uh, we will actually clone our repo by using the git changes. Uh, uh, and we will uh, uh, grab the uh, clone here. And let's see, and let's see, uh, as you can see, I already installed the uh, 500 sub. Let's do that. This is going to be my path and I'll clone it. And if we're lucky, everything runs. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, we, of course, need to set this as our startup project. The application needs to be run. Let's see, set a startup project so we don't try to run a DLL. There we go. So this is where we left off. Everything should build on your end. I actually discovered a bug in the last uh, episode, or rather the GitHub repo, uh, where the uh, debug uh, uh, folder didn't get uploaded to our repo because uh, Microsoft decides to ignore all uh, folders called debug. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this is our uh, setup. Um, let's see. I want to see the folders and everything is running building accordingly. So uh, what we want to do is, uh, let's see, oh, whoops, uh, this was a video from before. So let's just do uh, just another bad programming guide. And uh, let's see. And, and uh, whoops, uh, I'm sorry. Um, let's find the FBX SDK link here down in the dependencies. Um, of course, you should download it for Windows. Uh, I'm using Visual Studio uh, 2022, so therefore I have that version. Uh, you will download an installer and you will have to decide on a directory. Um, so what I did is I installed it on my uh, G drive in a libraries folder and in the FBX folder. And you can follow the documentation here. Uh, I'll of course show you. Uh, how to do it, but installing and configuring, we have different uh, stuff for Windows and Linux. Um, yeah, uh, we will be using the uh, static library stuff. Um, so it gets baked into our uh, project. This is uh, uh, then uh, how to implement uh, 
the different stuff. So uh, let's uh, open our project here. And uh, in properties on all configurations, C++ general, I'll add the uh, include directory for this uh, library here, FBX. And it's of course in the include folder. And I add that to my include directories. And of course, I make sure that we're doing it for all configurations. Then um, this project is set up correctly, but you have to check uh, the code generation flags uh, for your compiler. Uh, uh, so you can see it's multi-threaded multi debug DLL. That is our uh, runtime library. And for the release, it's the multi-threaded DLL. Um, so no changes are needed, but as you can see, these uh, static libraries here actually uh, require uh, uh, different runtimes. And depending on your Visual Studio version, you might see uh, um, different uh, options in terms of the uh, runtime library. So make sure that you are uh, having the uh, correct, uh, um, uh, having the correct, uh, um, what do you call it, runtime libraries according to your version of Visual Studio, if you're using that. Um, otherwise, I uh, expect you to be able to actually um, uh, uh, be able to, um, what do you call it, uh, figure out the correct installing of this uh, library here. So then in our linker, we need to add our library dependencies. Uh, and uh, let me see. So in our linker here, all configurations, uh, let's do input, let's do additional dependencies, and uh, let's look into our uh, FBX library here. And in lib, we are working on an x64 platform. Um, and these fa th files are named the same for either debug or release. Uh, but we would want it to select the correct configuration. So we need a, a macro that we used in our uh, uh, setup here. So we actually have these macros here that allow us to select our platform and then our configuration. So uh, for our additional dependencies here, we want to add add this so for uh, uh, the debug configuration we would end up with something like this but we of course want to specify the what do you call it path here so we would have to add this before so uh, this evaluates to this path here, and let's just check whether we can actually look up that path. We can. Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, And let's see, yeah. Oh, maybe I'm uh, actually entering this in the wrong one. Let's see, yeah. Uh, let's do it uh, in here instead in general, but it's still the same thing. Okay. So we add this uh, dependency here. And then in our input, 
we can actually add our specific files. Now, um, I'm going to use the one called MD here because that was uh, what our, my code generation was using a fla uh, as flags. So uh, uh, remember this uh, section here, runtime library, it's MD here. So I'm going to use uh, these file names here. I'm going to add the uh, SDK md.lib. Uh, and let's add that. Let's uh, also add the uh, lick lib XML uh, to uh, library. And let's add the set lib as well. I'm pretty sure uh, we use that one. Uh, but we need the one that is, of course, with the MD tag here. Uh, and then, um, as you can see here, we need an additional dependency um, called this um, win init or whatever. Um, so we add that de dependency too. And then uh, since we're using the static, uh, um, oh, it's only the, oh, it's actually only for the uh, debug version. Okay, so let's apply that. And then in our debug version, we will add the uh, uh, thing here, and then we need to ignore a default library as well. And that's our debug setup. Okay, everything should still compile, hopefully. Yeah. But right now we're not using anything, so that might be our salvation. Anyway, um, so let's try using uh, our uh, code here, let's see, or rather library, the FBX library. Um, um, and let's create a new engine file or folder. Uh, let's see, model loading or something like that. And let's create a class. And let's do a model loader API. And uh, Let's do this, add a namespace, and of course we need, uh, uh, let's see, uh, and let's add the export function here, or maybe, yeah, let's just do the, the export. And then um, let's just create the default constructor here. And then in our renderer API, let's uh, include it model loading, model loading uh, loader. And of course, we'll move it so that we can actually find it. And let's do uh, 
Uh, let's do a private here. Model loader API. Model loader. Yeah. And then inside this. Uh, no, rather this. Let's see. Engine. Let's actually include our uh, FBX SDK header file. And then let's do a uh, void load uh, FBX model const char pointer file path. Um, and let's create a definition for that. And uh, inside our renderer API, uh, right now we're doing all this. Uh, um, we're actually creating the uh, meshes and stuff like that. So uh, we're uploading our shadow transforms. Uh, let's remove this. Um, okay, so. Let's try accessing the M model loader, load FBX model, and let's uh, create a folder here. Models, and let's create a Blender model uh, for it. And um, let's see, uh, we'll uh, load a model, but first we will create one. So uh, let's open Blender. Let's uh, build a interesting model here. First off, let's delete the camera and the lights since we don't want that. Let's enter uh, um, edit mode and let's just build a model. I won't be, uh, be creating anything complicated, but I just want something like this and uh, maybe scale this down so that we can uh, actually um, uh, have something that allows us to uh, okay this is our model it's very very great and we will export it as an FBX and then in our uh, YouTube repo application models, we will model or rather test. And let's, uh, I can't remember, let's see um, what is our camera actually set up to be. So our camera. When we create it, uh, our camera is, is it right hand or left hand side? I can't remember. Left hand. Okay. Yeah, so I think uh, this is uh, the positive uh, set is forward. Okay, and I'm not going to do any settings here. I'm just going to export it as is. And now we should see our test.fbx here. So in our uh, renderer API, we will do models. Uh, uh, test dot fbx. All right. 
Uh, and then uh, inside our model loader here, we will create a FBX manager pointer. Uh, manager which will be created by the fbx manager uh, uh whoops uh create call which creates a pointer we need to set up some input and output settings uh, uh, that's also a pointer And we will use a method for that as well. We will create and it will take a uh, manager and yeah, input output settings root. Look up uh, the FBX documentation if you um, are in doubt. And then we will set the input output settings into our pointer here. Let's create an FBX importer then. Yeah, so this is a memory manager. This is settings. This is the actual importer, importer, and let's get our manager, and then uh, uh, the name, FBX importer. Let's just do that. Uh, And let's do a test here. So if our importer here initi uh, rather initialize with our file name here, file path, whoops, file path, and our format and our uh, Manager settings, get IO settings. If this fails, ah, whoops, we probably need a parenthesis. Uh, we need to pass out a error. Let's see. Can't remember how this project actually uses error handling in the uh, debug. Let's see, factory. Okay. Yeah, so YouTube eval, it uses C out. Okay. And we have print. Okay, we can print uh, messages. Okay. Uh, model loading failed. Print in uh, error code. And then we pass in our importer here. Get status and get error string. Yeah. Okay. Else we do something like print success loaded model at 
and then file path here. And let's see. Let's check our output log. Su success loaded the model at models test.fbx. So, so far, we're good. Um, then FBX models are arranged in scenes. You could actually import the camera, the lights and everything uh, with this SDK here. Uh, we will only use it for models and maybe even material settings. Uh, um, but um, yeah, uh, we won't be using those features. So. Um, let's build out this function then. So let's create an FBX scene. Uh, where we do scene and we do the uh, usual create stuff here. Create, uh, whoops, not create character. You can do the, all different kinds of stuff. You can also export FPX uh, files with this uh, interface. So therefore it's a, a loading scene, a model loading scene. And then let's do our importer here. Whoops. Uh, import. And let's do scene here and then uh, we can uh, deallocate the importer and then um, we can start getting our mesh um, so if we have several meshes here uh, we might want to be able to uh iterate over them so let's see that we do something like uh let's just do um an iterative loop here int i zero i list and the scene uh get geometry count and then uh, let's see geometry instead maybe uh, let's see and then we simply want to maybe uh, uh, print uh, geometry number and then our geometry number here and can we do anything interesting maybe plus one and let's uh, try to get a mesh uh, let's see uh, FBX SDK, create mesh from geometry, uh, scene geometry, I think this is, is this, this still relevant? Uh, 
Oh, anyway. Um, I think the information is, uh, yeah, let's see. So we want to do scene, get geometry. Uh, I can't spell. So let's get some help. Geometry. And we get the index here. Geometry here. And it will return an FBX geometry. Uh... Yeah, the FBX mesh. Uh, let's see. Okay, and if we do, yeah, right now, IntelliSense is uh, going nuts. Let's see, mesh pointer here. Yeah, so this inherits from, uh, It inherits from so the geometry will have the base data. Yeah. Okay. So we can basically do uh, this uh, mesh equals static cast FBX mesh pointer. And with our geometry here. And this should be fine, right? Yeah. And maybe until since needs uh, a refresh here. <laughs> okay, let's help IntelliSense recover itself. Oh, this is the uh, wrong version of uh, Visual Studio. So. There we go. So we have our mesh. Uh, and then we can, for instance, uh, um, pass out the, um, the, uh, vertex count mesh. It con and this is called control points and print in uh, index count and this is called uh, polygon count uh, no not polygon count it, it will not be the total index uh, but uh, It would be something like polygon count here times mesh uh, poly uh, get polygon size. And let's see. Uh, did 
this should be isn't it fine oh i need to put it in a parenthesis i guess or what am i not allowed to do that oh Let's just do a uh, normal polygon here. Yeah, okay, the index count is not correct, but as you can see, uh, we have a vertex count of uh, third. Oh, maybe the index count is correct. I don't know. Could be. Anyway, we have 32 vertices, and um, yeah. Uh, so let's do some uh, more model processing here right now in our renderer api we have vertices and we basically want to replace all of this um all of this stuff here so we have vertices with a normal end position And then we potentially have some indices which are just unsigned ints. So let's expand our model API here with a std vector of vertices reference out vertices and a std vector of uh, unsigned int reference out indices and i don't know if we need to Im include the renderer data types yeah we do uh, let's do include renderer api renderer data types there we go And we need to, there we go. Okay, and let's add that. A comma too much. Anyway, okay. And then in our calling function, let's eliminate this. So this is the vertices so far. Let's see, let's not upload anything. Actually, maybe just comment out the whole, oh. Also move this, I guess. Yeah, so. Let's comment out this and uh, rather right now we need to fix this. Okay. And let's move this. Yeah. So we have our vertices. We used to have an array. We will create a vector here. Uh, indices and pass in our vertices and indices. Then we can re-implement our uh, code here. Let me move this up here and then copy this. And we'll fix it in a moment. We'll just also move this. 
down to the end of the file. And let's do this. Oh, I forgot the initialization of it, right? No, I initialize it up here. Okay. And then uh, Yeah, we need to fix that code. Um yeah. So whoops. Let's uh arrange these things separately. So we have our loading here. Load our FBX model. Um and then we want to upload our vertices dot data and let's do vertices dot size here as our total size uh, and then we can upload that and then let's do like this uh, whoops data Okay, it actually wants this type here, so let's just do that. Just let's make sure that it's actually the same type. It's 32 bit instead. Okay. And let's do indices.size. Yeah, so we have our index buffer, our vertex buffer. Uh, let's see. Let's just do three indices for now. We will, of course, create something that is uh, way more dynamic. And let's see if everything compiles. Yeah, right now we're not rendering anything. So. Uh, we could store our uh, right now we don't uh, load any data, so that's actually our problem here. So. Let's start loading our data. So for each geometry, we want to uh, create a const fbx uh, vector here, or rather, first we want to uh, create the vertices. Uh, let's do a four int i zero i less than, and then our mesh here. Uh, get control point count and I plus plus and then FBX vector four reference uh, position which will be our mesh get control point uh, And let's build our vertices. Let's do a render vertex.
Uh, let me just think. So. Uh, let's check our normal stuff uh, eventually. Uh, so, uh, right now we're going to do vertices here. And let's do vertex dot position. Mm. Yeah, let's do that as a start. Right now, our normals will not be set. And I'm considering uh, how to grab them. Let's see if we have any errors. Uh, doing this anyway the position is a uh, directx float 3 so we can initialize this as our position x component y component and c component and then we can actually push back that to our uh, vector so out vertices dot push back or rather in place back uh, vertex here and let's try running that uh, okay we have a problem yeah so this is uh, probably a Uh, a double there we go and let's uh, try building the release as well and then we want to uh, copy our resources here we have our models uh, we actually need to copy all of it to debug it so we need shaders let's see we should be able to run this application here yeah loaded geometry and so forth so now we can use uh, let's see nvidia insight here does it work with this build here i can't remember uh, let's see insight Let's try that. Let's see. Let's capture a frame. We have a frame capture here. Uh, let's see all resources. Let's do a look up in our vertex buffer here and how is it i can't remember it's been so long since i actually uh ah there we go so float three and then float three, I guess. Right. So we have some vertex coordinates here, which looks fine. And then index 32 ind indices. So we actually upload our uh, stuff here. Okay. So that's great. Let's close all of this. 
Um, so let me see. Let's see if we can actually um, grab our normals as well. Uh, so let's see. Let's test something. If the uh, let's see mesh norm up oh. normal get normal uh let's see uh Let's see, get element normal. Let's do an a pointer here. To this FBX. Um, FBX geometry. normal or rather element normal here normal and we will have a uh, index of zero it's fine it's it's just grabbing the uh, first one and we can do get mapping mode and if this is uh let's test if this is equal to fbx element uh no uh is that it uh can't remember uh geometry element fbx geometry element in um, by control point uh, we have normals on the uh, control points And we don't. Um, at least so it seems. Um, maybe it's in Blender when I export to FBX geometry smoothing uh, let's see Then we would want to actually recompute some uh, normals manually, since our system is using uh, a C, um, kind of like um, creating extra vertices with the the specific uh, normals. Um, Yeah. Yeah. 
Can I convert it? FBX SDK convert normal control point. Let's see. Anyway, Let's see. Anyway, um, we'll have to uh, recompute the normals and uh, potentially create the correct vertices. So instead of doing this, uh, we have to do something else. Let's create. Um, the normals and indices here. Uh, so let's uh, do that. So this will be our renderer vertex here, uh, vertices, and uh, and we will reserve with our control point count here. And then we will do a vector of u int 32 uh, indices. So far, let's do something like this uh, we won't be adding anything and then uh, we want to do a for loop here as well no this is outside of uh, this loop here so this is going to be here and this is going to be here And then we process the base vertices. Actually, I think this should be maybe even just a direct X XM float here. Uh, positions. And then we will recompute our normals here. Uh, so instead of doing this, we will actually do a direct x xm float here. Position d x. And let's do an in place back of this position index here. So we store our base vertices positions. Then we want our uh, thing here to actually process our our indices and normals. So let's do mesh get polygon count. This is the amount of faces we have. And let's do uh, 
a polygon here. Polygon and increase the polygon. And let's do a const unsigned or rather a const int polygon size. And let's do our mesh here. Get polygon size. And let's just print it out for now. Poly size. Polygon size. And let's uh, comment this out for now. And let's do for the polygon. And let's see how our faces is uh, arranged actually. Okay, we have four polygons. Um, um, yeah, so maybe we want uh, to actually uh, remember when we uh, export our model here. I'm just going to use the cube instead for now. It won't matter. Let's do uh, the correct directory, of course, here. And then in our application, we will overwrite this. But when we do geometry, let's do triangulate faces. Yeah. And let's remember that our X set is going forward. Uh, and let's export our FBX. And let's try loading then. And we have a polygon size of three instead. So uh, right now we're rendering triangles and not quads. Therefore, I do that. Um, can you set set polygon or convert? Yeah, maybe you could uh, use the FBX uh, library in a smart way to do conversions for you. I can't, uh, I really don't know the SDK that well, so uh, I'm not going to spend time, uh, um, you know, um, diverging down that path and exploring uh, um, uh, exactly that. So let's do vertex less than, oh, let's do, let's do polyvert, polyvert less than polygon size, and then polygon vert here. Uh, polyvert plus plus. Um, and we want a index count here, total indices, uh, which is actually going to be stored outside of our geometry i uh, rather like this uh, it, it's because uh, we will do uh, on sunny and total vertices I guess we could use that as well so now let's not do it here because this is temporary so total indices plus plus here okay and then we will do a uint in index uh 
uh, which will be our mesh gate polygon vertex uh, in our polygon. And then our poly vertex. And we will add that to our indices list. Push back. Or, uh, yeah, we can do in place back, we, although it doesn't matter. This is not constructed in place anyway. And we'll do that. Um, also, we want some normals. Uh, we want some normals, which are XM float normals um, polygon normals yeah so uh, we will want to process our our polygon or rather our normals here so for uh, we will create a normal here Uh, and normal uh, for normal Vic, uh, Vic 4, which will be our let's create a function for this. Get normal Return FBX vector here. And let's pass in a uh, mesh git git element normal. So we will pass in a normal here, which is great. And then uh, let's see. So we can pass in. Our um, our face index here as well. Uh, const uint thirty two face index, and let's just do some error checking here. Uh, if the normal mapping mode and it's not equal to FBX geometry uh, geometry element E by polygon vertex. If it's not 
or rather if it's like this we will handle it otherwise we will uh, print in and uh, not implement it normal handling for other than face indexes face indices Okay, and if the normal reference mode here, uh, uh, get reference mode is equal to E direct, we do like this. We simply return the normal get direct array get at our face index here otherwise we set our cards in, in uh, index to be our normal uh, whoops normal get get index array rather get at face index and then we return our normal uh, let's see normal get direct array get at and with our index here uh, let's just do a temporary output here non direct mode for normal um so this is uh processing the normal and let's see if we actually compile and run and nothing happens uh that's because we actually do the direct okay let's do direct mode Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we can directly access uh, the indices and don't have to get a separate index from the index array beforehand. Right. So this processes our normals. And let's do... Let's do const here. And then let's create our normal. Let's do direct x, xm float three, uh, normal, normal vec four, zero. Uh, one and two 
that's our normal and then we add it to our polygon normals you can place back our normal yeah okay so now we've created all our information for this uh, uh, thingy here so now we have our arrays we create the vertices and then uh create indices and normals and then uh, uh we have a problem still because our normals uh Um, so we kind of like have more normals than, uh, um, than we actually would like, let's see, uh, so the vertices themselves are like empty and they don't contain any normals, uh, but the indices can uh, control the normals. Um, we could do separate buffers. I don't know. Um, so let's just try to debug this and see what information we get. Loaded model. Oh yeah, okay, I need the float. Okay, uh, let's see. So let's see, we have our polygon normals. We have 64, we have six, uh, uh, or that are rather 36. Uh, let's see our indices. Um, yeah, and our normals here. Yeah, so let's see mesh get polygon vertex vertex normal. Uh, Uh, let's see. Uh. Uh, 
I guess we could uh, build our um, uh, polygons from this. Um, let's see if we export it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so um, yeah, the problem is that right now we're getting um, uh, 36 indices and uh, normals since the normals map to the um. Uh, uh, FBX SDK, the normals map to uh, convert normals to control points. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, Blender export FBX normal with control points. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, vertex. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I guess, uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, uh, add this, uh, in part two. So, uh, yeah, there will be a part two in terms of uh, figuring out how to uh, actually do this. 
most elegantly since our DirectX backend uses a different uh, vertex format. We could solve it in different ways. Uh, you could upload the normals to a separate uh, vertex buffer and bind two vertex buffers. Um, but our indexing here gets wrong as well. So, um, or rather, maybe the okay, let's just create a uh, separate uh, thing here. Uh, normal indices. Uh, let's do a u in two. Uh, this is actually 32, right? Uh, index two, mesh, get polygon, normal. Can I get the index? Oh, wait a minute. So that's actually, I think, Also, am I supposed to? So we get the element normal. Mm, yeah, maybe we can grab it from that. Let's see our normal pointer here. Let's just let's see if we can test normal. Uh, get owner. Remap index to. New mapping mode. Oh, let's try that. Uh, remap index to. Yeah, let's try to remap index to FBX layer element e, uh, by control point. And let's see what we end up with that. Still 36. Oh. Yeah, okay, uh, let's, passing this then, 36, now, 
yeah, I'm going to play around with that in the, and figure it out for the next episode. So at least we got our models loading here. Uh, we still need to actually upload it to the GPU and use it in uh, draw calls. So uh, I'll do that in the next episode. All right. Um, yeah, I'm doing this live, so bear with me in terms of uh, actually uh, uh, discovering different problems. I haven't worked a lot with the uh, FBX SDK, and I, in my other projects, have implemented a model loader myself. So um, it's just the way it goes. Anyway, hopefully I'll catch you in the next episode. Um, let's just do... Uh, uh, extension part one, yeah, and commit these changes. And um, yeah, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe, uh, or uh, check out the live stream where we mess around with this stuff uh, and answer questions. Uh, uh, yeah, all right, hopefully, I'll see you in the next one, and bye bye.